Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time full playthrough walkthrough. In part five of the walkthrough, we are going to go through Zora's Domain, as well as inside Jabu Jabu's Belly, which is the third dungeon of the game. After that, we are going to go back to the Deku Tree and retrieve the final gold Skulltula that we could not get our first time there. And then... Uh, we will proceed to the plot twist of the game that sort of kicks off, I'd say, like the, the back two-thirds of the game. You'll notice here that I'm on the file select screen, and that is because Ocarina of Time always kicks you back to Link's house uh, early on in the game, whenever you start and stop, or whenever you stop then start the game again. And this is a really good opportunity to showcase um, one of the many like hints that the game gives you. So after you finish Dodongo's Cavern and you're kind of done in Goron City, you aren't explicitly told where to go next. However, after a little while of adventuring, uh, Navi will sort of yell at you and say, like, hey, shouldn't you, um, shouldn't you talk to somebody to find out where to go next? And she is correct, so we're literally just going to walk around Hyrule Field in the general direction of where we're supposed to go. And then, in a second here, Navi should yell at us. Hopefully. Maybe? Please yell at us? I can't believe I'm begging for Navi to... There she is. Okay. I wonder if Saria knows anything about the other spiritual stone. Well, we can talk to Saria on command by playing Saria's song. Listen. She says, you want to talk to Saria, right? We select talk to Saria. Saria says, Link, this is Saria. Can you hear me? Are you collecting spiritual stones? You can ha You have one more to find? You mean the spiritual stone of water, don't you? The Great Deku Tree once told me that King Zora, ruler of the Zoras, ruler of Zora's domain, has it. Okay, so now we know where to go. Zora's domain. Oh, uh, whoops. So, if you look on the map, we haven't yet discovered Zora's domain. But, the game is helpful enough to give us a flashing dot on the map, and if we highlight it, we see that that is, in fact, Zora's domain. Now, unfortunately, this map doesn't show Link's location, but we can sort of infer that if we go uh, between uh, Goron City up here and Kakariko Village, if we go between Kakariko Village and Kokiri Forest, we should hit Zora's Domain. So that is where we're headed now. And what we're going to do is we're just going to follow this river. And if you look carefully, there seems to be a path that goes through the river here. So we can just cross the river. And then you see a sign here. Let's go ahead and read that. And it says Zora's River. Watch out for swift current and strong undertow. Don't mind if we do. All right, and here's Mr. Owl. Ooh, looks like you've gotten bigger and stronger already, Link. Just ahead lies Zora's domain. The Zoras serve Hyrule's royal family by protecting this water source. Their door will not open for anyone except those who have some connection with the royal family. Let them hear the melody of the royal family. Hoo hoo hoot. It goes away. So the melody of the royal family, we know by now, is Zelda's lullaby. It is the key to everything. So this uh, this route is blocked by boulders. So if you tried to come here before gaining the bombs, you wouldn't be able to get past. But you just plant one. And you blow them up, and then you're good to go. So this gentleman here sells magic beans. Hello, sir. Chomp, chomp, chomp. How about some magic beans? They aren't selling very well. Well, maybe if you weren't locked behind boulders. How about 10 rupees for one piece? We say yes. You got a magic bean. Find a suitable spot for a garden and plant it with C. Then wait for something fun to happen. On the select item subscreen, you can set it and plant it with C left, down, or right. If you want to plant beans, go around and look for soft soil. Chomp, chomp, chomp. 
So this is soft soil. We have discussed this a couple times. So let's go ahead and use it. There we go. There are 10 soft soil locations throughout the game. This is the only one that if you put bugs down, a gold skull will not come out. So I mistakenly said last time that there are 10 gold skull tillas in the world that are down uh, soil patches. There's only nine. I made a mistake. If we speak to the gentleman again, he says, how about some magic beans? Well, they're not that popular yet. That last line changes a bunch of times. How about 20 rupees for one? Just say no. You need 20 rupees for something else pretty soon. So what I recommend doing from this point onward is changing back to the Kokiri shield. Uh, or the Deku Shield. You're not going to encounter anything on fire that can melt it away or burn it away, so you don't need to worry about it anymore. All right. All right, unfortunately, this current is taking us away, so we need a way to kind of beat it. But not to worry, there actually is a way to do that. Let me see if I can get some quick rupees here. And we got a magic jar. Magic meter is filled. Not, not completely, right? All right, I was hoping to get at least, you know, to 40 so I could buy another magic beam, but it's okay. Nope. Hello? All right, so if we pick up the cuckoo, the cuckoo, we can actually glide across the water. Just like that. All right, and we can keep doing it. Very good. Keep doing it through here. Very good. And you can get rid of it now. This is a log that has a bunch of frogs on it. This is part of a little mini game that you can play with the ocarina and uh, teach those frogs a song that you learn much later on. And then it has a second heart piece associated with it uh, for even more music. All right, so we're gonna keep going along this way, keep following the river. All right, you can see a gold Skulltula on that ladder right there. But again, we're not getting any overworld Skulltulas, uh, at least not yet. So this right here, if you were to dive down here, you would almost reach an exit. Now we have seen the other side of this exit. It's in the Lost Woods. So the Lost Woods has access to both Goron City as well as uh, Zora's River. So, if we check this little tablet here, it says Sleepless Waterfall. The flow of this waterfall serves the King of Hyrule. When the King slumbers, so too do these falls. So, that's our little hint to symbolize that we are associated with the royal family by playing Z uh, Zelda's Lullaby. And the waterfall calms down. You can actually hear the gold skulltula now. And you can very clearly see an entrance. Welcome to Zora's Domain. All right, so in Zora's Domain, if we just follow this main path here, we will eventually find this staircase and then King Zora loads in. Let's go ahead and speak with him. Oh, my dear sweet Princess Rudo. Where has she gone? I'm so worried. That's all he says. So Princess Rudo has gone missing. If we read this sign. Hello. It says, hi, dive practice spot. Are you confident in your diving skill? I think so. So you want to play this diving minigame to get the silver scale because... I'm, I'm going to check something. It, we're going to get it anyway, just because this is a 100% walkthrough. But I'm pretty sure you, this is required uh, in order to access the next area. So we're going to play the diving mini game. It says, pick up all the rupees I throw from here. You have only a limited amount of time. When you pick them all up, come back here. I'll give you something very nice. All right, so he throws down some rupees. 25 to be exact. 
you want to talk to him one more time because he's going to give you a pretty good hint. Go over the falls for a shortcut. So it's, it's a little uh, it's a little cryptic, but I'll show you what that means in, in a second. So what you want to do is just line up Link's shadow over the rupees. The hitbox is pretty generous. There's going to be five rupees that were thrown, and then you have a fairly generous amount of time to get them all. But kind of finding them can be a bit of a pain. That's three. Four. And then five. Very good. Hey, congratulations. I've got something very nice for you. Come and get it. All right, before we go over there, the reason that we want to do this in the first place is to gain access to this shortcut here, which, yeah, we do need the silver scale to, to reach. So we'll get it in a second. But more importantly is just want to explain. Sorry, I think I just muted my mic. Um, I just want to explain something here really quick. In older games, you would often find towns. This is something that RPG sort of lost a long time ago, probably around the time of Final Fantasy 13 was the last time, or Final Fantasy 12 was really the last big RPG that had towns. Um, I know many games after that had towns, but for the games that like in introduce people to RPGs and get people into the into the genre, after 12 they kind of went away from towns. They have come back, which is very nice. But anyway, point being, within towns there's always NPCs and you were always encouraged to talk to NPCs because they give you a lot of information. This dungeon that we're about to go into in this walkthrough is one of the major reasons that I wanted to do this walkthrough series in the first place because I've been in conversations with people over the last number of years, um, and they always say that, like, they don't always say but the common sentiment is that games were so cryptic back in the day and there was no way you could figure anything out without using a guide. I'm not saying that's not the case for like very rare instances, but Zelda Ocarina of Time and this next upcoming dungeon is not one of those instances. And it's something that people like to refer to a lot these days. So I'm going to show you how somebody in 1998, aka 10-year-old me, figured this stuff out. Okay, so we're going to talk to this Zora here. Whoops. And he says, who are you? We are the Zoras, the proud aquatic people. So, you say you have some connection with the with Hyrule's royal family? Well, what do you want from us? Let's talk to him again. The first Zora you talk to will always say that. He says, have you seen Lord Jabu Jabu? Say no. Oh, that's not good. Everybody who comes around here should see Lord Jabu Jabu at least once. Zora's fountain is just beyond King Zora's throne. That is where Lord Jabba Jabba swims. But, unless you have King Zora's permission, you can't go to Zora's fountain. All right. Well, let's just choose the other option then. Have you seen Lord Jabba Jabu? Yes. According to the legend of Zora, haha, the act of offering a fish to Lord Jabu Jabu will make you happy. Fish being highlighted and it being a very key word. So the other Zora in Zora's domain say, you know, other stuff, you know, telling you a little bit about the Zora people. Um, there is one other Zora that I'd like to speak with. It's this guy. Zora's fountain is the source of the river. Lord Jabu Jabu lives in the fountain. Lord Jabu Jabu is the patron deity of the Zoras. Princess Rudo is in charge of preparing his meals morning and night. Okay. Cool. So let's go get our silver scale, but keep in the back of your mind that one person told us to offer him a fish as part of an offering, and the other one said that Princess Rudo is in charge of his meals morning and night. But Princess Rudo is missing. That's what the king told us. So let's speak with this gentleman again. And he says, what a graceful dive. Now please take this. This is a scale of our kind. With this, you can dive much deeper under the water. You got the silver scale. It's like a scale from their skin. It's not a weight scale. So this allows us to dive deeper, and it's here uh, on our equipment screen. So the silver scale. Cool. Oh my god. 
No, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to dive, bro. I just want to dive. Whoa, there's a 50 rupee down there. I'm glad I did that. That's super rare. Wow, that's that's awesome. This is great. <laughs> This was very accidental, but that, that 50 rupee is so rare. I can't stress how rare that is. There's like not many 50 rupees in the game. You just tossed one, that's sick. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but it's okay. There's nothing else to win. It's okay. All right, so with the silver scale, we are going to dive down here and go through this cave. This cave leads us to Lake Hylia. And as we're swimming up, if you look there, Navi has highlighted something. If we target it and talk to Navi, she says, what's that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive and grab it. So all you gotta do is just touch it. And it says, you got an empty bottle. Put something inside and use it with C. What, there's something already inside? Yes. Yeah, I thought there was a Zora here. What does this guy say? She says, I am Azora. Have you seen anything strange in the lake? The river carries many things into this lake. Okay, so somebody told us to go over the falls for a shortcut. That is here, okay? We are actually in Lake Hylia. So, went from Zora's domain all the way to Lake Hylia down here. And if you look... I can't point to it, but if you look in the northwest section of the uh, of the of the little zone for Lake Hylia, you'll see a cutout, like a ravine going through the mountain. That is the falls that the Zora was telling you about. So if you go through there, that will take you to the west section of the map. It's a nice little shortcut, but we're not going to do that. If you look in the distance there, you can see Mr. Owl. Let's go talk to him. This is completely optional, but I am curious what he has to say. These games are often very selective about draw distance and what they actually populate in the distance. You'll notice that he's sort of perched on something invisible, but after you get close, it loads in. But because he's drawn like that, I did want to talk to him. Oh, this is a shortcut. Where is he going to bring us? What are you doing? You've come a long way to get up here. You should look at the map subscreen sometimes. Guide, Link, this is a beautiful lake full of pure, clear water. At the lake bottom, there is a water temple. Ho ho, used to worship the water spirits. <laughs> the Zoras are guardians of the temple, hoo hoo. The Zoras come from Zora's domain in Northeast Hyrule, an aquatic race. They are longtime allies of Hyrule's royal family. I heard that only the royal family of Hyrule can enter Zora's domain. I'm on my way back to the castle. If you want to come with me, hold on to my talents. Now nah, we're good. So yeah, this is the ravine I was talking about. This is the shortcut that you can take. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's the other direction? It is the other direction. The shortcut is the other way. It, it goes from that valley into the lake. I, I messed that up. Okay, so something else very important that we're going to do here in uh, in Lake Hylia is we are going to speak with a pair of scarecrows. So this one down here, his name is Bonoro, or I always said it Bonoru, but it's B-O-O-N-O-R-U or something like that. Bonuru, Bonu Bonuru, the scarecrow musical genius. I hear a song once and I never forget it, baby. Okay, so it says, whoa, you have an ocarina. Hey, why don't you lay a tune on me with it, baby? Play anything you want as long as it's eight notes. That's all you got to do. So I usually just do left, up, right, down, and then A four times. It's just easy to remember. You want to play something that is very easy to remember. Very easy to remember. <laughs> so it says, I don't mean I can remember only eight notes, but let's just cut it right there for now, baby. His brother, Pierre... 
is up on this perch. So if we speak with him, he says, My name is Pierre, the Wandering Scarecrow. Actually, I wish I could wander to look for soul-moving sounds, but I'm kind of stuck here. If we take out our ocarina, we can play the song we just wrote for Bonoru. Bonoru? Yeah, Bonoru. Anyway. Oh, God. Ugh. Just press B to stop. It says, if you come up with a nice song, come back and let me hear it. It's most important to play it for this guy right here. And you'll find out why later in the game. But doing it now is very important. Okie doke. So, we got the bottle, right? That's what we fished up. So what we can do, it's called letter. So we can actually use it. Huh? It looks like there is something already inside this bottle. It's a letter. Help me. I am waiting for you inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. Signed, Rudo. P.S. Don't tell my father. Well, Link's a little narc, so we're going to tell him. Alrighty. So, remember, someone told us to bring a... F oh, never mind. I don't have any empty bottles. Just remember, somebody told us that Lord Jabu Jabu, if you're going to visit him, you should bring a fish as an offering, and that Princess Rudo was responsible for his meals morning and night, but has gone missing. Okay? So, let's target... This guy. Oh, God. Why didn't that work? Target him. Oh, my God, dude. Target him and then use it. Jesus. It says, ho, this letter. It's from Princess Rudo. Hmm, let's see. She's inside Lord Jabu Jabu. That's not possible. Our guardian god, Lord Jabu Jabu, would never eat my dear Princess Rudo. But since that stranger, Ganondorf, came here, Lord Jabu Jabu has been a little green around the gills. The evidence seems clear. Of course, you'll go find Rudo. You can pass through here to the altar of Lord Jabu Jabu. I'll keep this letter. You keep the bottle it was in. Take it respectfully. Please find my dear Princess Rudo immediately. Zora! <laughs> Okay, so he moved. Now, the next area that we're going to go into is to see Lord Jabu Jabu. So we want to bring him an offering. That's what the guy told us to do. we got to bring him an offering. We can't be so disrespectful to not bring a deity an offering, right? So we have a little fish pond here. Just go ahead and use your bottle near a fish. It says, you got a fish. Okay, great. We got a fish. Go us. All right, so we're going to go behind where King Zora sits. Welcome to Zora's Fountain. And there's Lord Jabu Jabu, the gigantic fish. You can hear him breathing. Read the sign. Says, "Don't disturb Lord Jabu. Don't disturb Lord Jabu Jabu. But we got to make him. An, we have to make him an offering, right? And Princess Rudo's inside, so we got to get him to open his mouth, right? We got to feed him. There 
you go. So personally speaking, I don't think this is that cryptic. <laughs> I never did. I figured this out as a kid. I just think that modern games tend to spell things out a little bit more directly for you, especially with quest trackers. But here we are inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly. If you want to leave, just walk towards his teeth and you'll be able to leave. All right, so we have some Octorox here. Bounce their nonsense back at them. You can kill those bubbles if you like, but you don't really need to. Now, this dungeon is really creative. This acts as a barrier, so it says, something strange is covering the entrance. You must solve the puzzle in this room to make the entrance open. All right, so we are in the, the mouth of something anyway. So this is that little punching bag that sits, you know, near your tonsils. It's a switch. Just shoot it. All right, so these jellyfish, you can't actually do anything about until you get an item a little later on. So for now, we're just gonna go straight through this room. And as we enter this room, we will be greeted by Princess Rudo. There she is. It says, you, who are you? I am Rudo, Princess of the Zoras. What? Are you saying my father asked you to come here to save me? I'd never ask anyone to do such a thing. Let her in a bottle? I have no idea what you're talking about. My father is worried about me. I don't care. Anyway, I can't go home right now, and you get out of here, understand? So she's going to dip. Uh, but then she's going to fall. Okay. So we're going to follow her. That's okay. We're just going to land here. Speak with her again. You can clearly see two gold skull tillas on the walls. We'll get those in a little while. Are you still hanging around here? I told you to go away. I'm okay. I've been going inside Lord Jabu Jabu's belly since I was a little since I was little, but Lord Jabu Jabu is very strange today. There are electrified jellyfish and strange holes around. On top of that, my precious stone was but that's none of your business. Anyway, you go home now, understand? Well, we're not gonna go home. We're gonna talk to her again. Ugh, God. Uh, while these are around, you can't talk to her. There we go. You're that worried about me? Then I will give you the honor of carrying me. However, I won't leave until I find the thing I'm looking for. You'd better believe me. She ain't joking. All right, so we're going to pick up Princess Rudo, and we're going to take her on our adventure with us. You can open doors with her, but keep in mind that in most cases... Unless it's unless you have to like leave her somewhere specific, she will um, she will go back to that spot that we were just at where we picked her up. She will always return there if you ever lose her. So just keep that in mind. All right. So in this room here, you can see a gold skulltula on this wall. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot the J. Okay. Let's pick up Princess Rudo, and then we're gonna toss her over here. Okay. And we're going to press this switch. It's going to raise the water, but only for a short amount of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb up here. We are going to grab the token. Great, great timing there. And we can come over here. You can go up there. There's just some pots up there. Nothing crazy. But the Skulltula is the main mission of that room, as well as getting Princess Rudo over here. So we're going to put her down. We have another one of these things. Go ahead and shoot it. That opens the door, or unlocks the door, rather. Okie doke. So, in this room, we have an Octorok. Just put Rudo down, bounce it back at him. You can press C up, and you'll see that a platform is falling down. So, this room, you really just got to wait. If you swim through that hole over there, there's a Deku scrub. I think he sells you Deku nuts, but we don't need those. Okay, so this elevator brings us back to the second room of the dungeon. So now let's go through here again. And this is where we first found Princess Rudo in this room. But for now, we're just going to walk all the way to the other side. Just be careful with these little pits. You don't want to fall down them. Unless you do at a specific time, but not yet. Okay, cool. Let's come through here. 
And then in this room, this is a tri-splitting hallway. What we're going to do is we're going to come through here. And then this switch will not take just our body weight. Navi will tell us that. She says, this switch, it doesn't look like you can press it down with your weight alone. But since we're holding Princess Ruto, we have double the weight. Or not double, of course, because she's a lady. But yeah. So now we can open the door. And then inside, we can put Ruto down. And you'll see these little stingray things in the ground. When you walk over them, they sort of shoot out. And then you want to shoot each one twice. All right, there's one more. Okay, this one dropped ammo back here. Once the fourth one dies, there we go. A big chest appears. Now, this is one of the rare instances in this game. Oh, love it when that happens. That's so rare. Uh, this is one of the rare instances in this game where you actually find the treasure of the dungeon before anything else. But this this treasure is so pivotal to uh, finishing the dungeon that that's why they gave it to you first. So you got the boomerang. You can attack distant enemies with it by using C. So now you can kill those electrified jellyfish among other things. So make sure you equip it. You're basically always going to have this thing equipped as, uh, as Link for the early stages of the game. All right, so we're going to go back out. And then we are going to go all the way across. And then we have this room here with a blue switch. And you know from your time in Dodongo's Cavern that blue switches require you to leave something on top of them. So that's Princess Ruto. She will not disappear from that switch. All right, so in this room, we have this tentacle thing. It's called a parasitic tentacle, maybe? It seems that the narrow part is its weak point. You need a particular item to destroy it. Well, now we do. So just go ahead and Z-target it, chuck your boomerang, and it will go back up. You want to walk towards the middle. You want to walk towards the middle and then just throw it. But be prepared to dodge because it will reel back waiting for you. Just repeat this process. Oh, God. You got to hit it four times with the boomerang. Very good. Now that's destroyed. And we get the dungeon map as a prize. Now, if you were to peek down any of those other hallways in that, you know, splitting room, you will notice a a blue tentacle that you can't actually do anything about and a red tentacle that you can't do anything about. However, because we just killed a red parasitic tentacle, the other half of it is now gone. So now we can go through that room. So we find Rudo again. She says, how inconsiderate. How could you leave me behind? If you're a man, act like one. Take responsibility. She just sits back down. So what's cool about this room is that it's actually a moving floor. So it sort of like guides you to where you want to go. So Navi points out the obvious. She says, the red slimy thing is gone. That must be because you cut the red tail. Will that work with the other ones too? Probably. All right, so we go in here. And now we have a bunch of bubbles and a 40 second timer. This room is optional, but I mean, oh God. So Link can either uh, break the bubbles with his body or you can use uh, the boomerang or his sword. Either way, it all works. Oh, come on. Oh boy. All right, very good. So the bubbles typically leave behind hearts. So I'm just gonna grab that heart before we open the chest and get the compass. Nice. Okie doke, so this is the compass. So you get all three items in this hallway really fast. So we found the compass. Now you can see the locations of hidden things. Very good. Alrighty. So let's go through here again. Let's go back through here. And now it's time to kill another one of those tentacles. So we can go through, nope, that's the blue one. And we go through the other blue hallway now. Very good, this was uh, previously blocked by the red tentacle. All right, so we go in here and we see the blue tentacle now. Sorry, the other one was blocked by the red tentacle. I'm not sure if I said blue. Same deal, same exact deal. Very good. Okay, so now the blue one is gone. Now we can go down the center hallway. Pick Rudo back up. 
Hook a right, and then we're going to hook another right. Just be careful of these uh, little sandworm things. These are killed with the boomerang, but we're just going to ignore them. So now the blue thing is gone. All right. Now in here, we have a number of jellyfish. I do recommend killing the jellyfish just because that's, like, the, the Z targeting is always going to prioritize them for some for some reason or another. And they do, they do aggro to you, so... All right. Very good. Cool. So with the blue one gone, now we can go through here. And then the final part of the hallway is now open to us. Oh, God. My bad. It's over here. Oh, no, that was the green one. I'm sorry. The green one is gone. We're done in this section. <laughs> My bad. Got a little turned around. So we're done in this section, and now the green tentacle is gone. If you recall, the green tentacle was in this room going down one of the holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to fall down one of these holes, this one specifically. And now the green thing is gone. And we are now also on the other side of where we first dropped down. And we have access to the gold skulltulas. So that fourth one should leave us alone. So what we're going to do is we're going to kill these. And then we are going to use our boomerang to collect the tokens. Okay. That's number two. That's number three. And there is one more in this dungeon, and we will be able to get it and successfully fully complete a dungeon. All right, cool. So let's pick up Rudo again. Go through this room. And she sees what we're looking for. That's it. That's what I've been looking for. Throw me up there. Onto the platform. Do as she asks. <laughs> Princess Rudo got the spiritual stone. But why Princess Rudo? Oh my goodness, I finally found my mother's stone. I got very upset when Lord Jabu Jabu swallowed it. While I was feeding him, he suddenly swallowed me. I was so surprised I dropped it inside. But now that I've found it, I don't need to be in here anymore. So take me home right now. And then as soon as you approach the platform, something happens. Yeah, what is this, an octopus? It's a big boy. It's a big Octorok. All right, so he's going to chase us, but he is just slow enough to where we're actually going to end up chasing him eventually. So you just want to keep going the opposite direction that the platform in the middle is spinning. You want to watch out because it does have spikes around its perimeter. You don't want to touch those. It'll just deal continuous damage to you. It won't knock you back. But once Navi gives you the ability... Oh, Jesus. Once Navi gives you the ability to target the boss, you want to do so and chuck your boomerang. And then take out your sword. Do a jump slash on the little thing behind him. Turn... Oh, God. Turn around and just repeat the process. Now, as the fight goes on, you will... Uh, the Octorok will turn around and start chasing you if you're not quick enough. Alright. Gotta do it one more time. Oh no, that's it. Two jump slashes. I thought it was three. Cool. So that's that. Don't forget to pick up the hearts. And then you want to take this elevator up. Alright, that leaves you in this chamber, but now that you have the boomerang, jellyfish are no problem. Okay, in here, sort of introduces you to these guys, but if you throw your boomerang at them, they will become paralyzed. Do the same to this one. Oh god, I may get screwed here. Wow. Whew. And then jump across. Wow, that was 
weird camera. Okay, in here, there seems to be some exits for you to take, but none on your level. So just jump over to this platform, and then it actually falls down. Okay, now we are back in that second room of the dungeon. However, there's a blue switch here, but no Princess Rudo. There are, however... I just don't want this guy bothering me. There are, however, a couple of crates that you can pick up over here. Grab one of these. Oh, God. Same as before. Leave the crate on the switch. Now you're in here. Okay, so this is the last room before the boss. There is a bunch of jellyfish to kill, so you want to come over here, take care of them. That was nice. I threw it while falling. But there's also a gold skulltula in here that is a little difficult to hear until you come to this side. Very good. Ugh. Okie doke, that is the fourth and final gold skulltula of the dungeon. So if you go to the map subscreen, you will notice the gold skulltula icon next to the map name inside George inside Jabba Jabba's belly. That means that there are no more gold skulltulas in the in the area. It's the first time in the game that you're able to to see that. At least in a dungeon. Okay, so we have a switch here, but it is blocked by glass so we can't just shoot it so we got to use the boomerang we gotta get a little closer use the boomerang and it clips it on the way around very good now we have access to the boss the boss of this dungeon oh god the boss of this dungeon is pretty interesting it's multi-phase which for the it's the first time so this dungeon in introduces you to several things it introduces you to a mini boss it introduces you to um Enemies that can only be killed by certain weapons, and it introduces you to multi-phase boss fights. Pretty cool. So this should indicate to you that the game is starting to ramp up in difficulty, or at least complexity. So the boss of this dungeon, uh, the first phase, what we're going to do is we're going to use the boomerang to cut the tentacles that are connecting into the top of the room. We're going to use the boomerang to cut those, and then the boss is kind of going to get stunned, and then we're going to be able to attack the centerpiece, and then it's going to get up, and it's going to have jellyfish circling it. You want to kill those jellyfish with the boomerang. And then for the final phase of the fight, you're going to throw the boomerang at the boss while dodging electricity. Um, and then when you hit the boss with the boomerang in that third and final phase, you can take out your sword and deal damage to it. Okay, cool. It's a pretty hectic fight, but it is fun. That's the target in the first phase, those three tentacles. And phase two is these jellyfish, and then phase three is what they're protecting. Bioelectric Anemone Baronade. All right, so just go ahead and target the top. Watch out for the electricity. Very good. All right, so now the boss is gonna do its thing. Oh God, why did I do that? Just target the boss, and then once it clips, once the boomerang hits the boss, the jellyfish will detach, but not for long, okay? It's not an infinite deta detachment. Oh, nice. We clipped that one on the back end. Okay. Phase three time. Same deal. And did we do this too fast? Oh boy. There we go. Alright, so the final phase is starting now. Oh boy. Yep, so once there's no more jellyfish, you want to target the boss, throw your boomerang, it'll get stunned. Do a jump slash, back up. You really only have time for one. Okay. Same deal. It'll sink into the ground. Use your boomerang. Just keep walking the perimeter. 
Wait for it to get back up. Perfect. It's probably too far away now. Yep. There you go. There's the boss. So I think in version 1.0, the blood there is red. I know for sure it's red on the final boss. All right, don't forget the heart container. Pops up right next to you. And then you can teleport out. And there's Princess Rudo. She says, you, you're late. What took you so long? You're useless. I was just lonely, that's all. Just a little. I think the red under her eyes is to indicate that she had been crying. All right. Salacious. You, you looked cool. Cooler than I thought you would, anyway. Just a little. Well, anyway, you saved me, so I guess I'll reward you. What do you wish? Just tell me. You either want that spiritual stone or nothing, really. Just ask for it. Be man, ask for what you want. You mean the spiritual stone of water is or a sapphire, don't you? My mother gave it to me and said I should give it to only the man only to the man who will be my husband. You might call it the Zora's engagement ring. All right. I'll give you my most precious possession, Zora Sapphire. You obtain Zora Sapphire. This is the spiritual stone of water passed down by the Zoras. Her most precious possession? You don't know what she's talking about, but you've finally collected all three spiritual stones. Go back to see Princess Zelda. We will do that. Don't tell my father. That's Rudo. Okay. So, Zora's domain, or Zora's fountain, the game kind of spits you out in front of this tree. This is very peculiar. Now, what I'm going to do is entirely optional, um, but it's still important. So you'll notice here that there is a boulder that you can blow up with with, uh, with a bomb, but this one you can't. Using a bomb here doesn't do any anything. But if you look closely, you'll notice that this boulder is like half in the wall. So let's try to blow up this one. Let's just see what happens. Oh my god, it's a big cave. If you had the item to break this boulder, if you broke it, you would see a crack in the wall. But you can just kind of blow it up anyway. So this is a great fairy's fountain, and now we're going to get another spell. So take out your ocarina and play Zelda's Lullaby. Welcome, guide. I am the great fairy of magic. I will give you a magic spell. Please take it. <laughs> you got Furore's Wind. This is warp magic you can use with C. Warp when you are in danger. 
You will teleport to the warp point. When you first use the magic, you will create a warp point. That should be the other way around. When you use the magic again, you can either dispel the warp point you created last time or warp to that point. This is only usable in dungeons, but it allows you to use... Oh, yeah, she does say it. Only, only in dungeons that have a dungeon map hidden inside. So no caves. just has to be an actual dungeon. When battle has made you hoary, please come back to see me. So, yeah, it allows you to set a warp point and then warp back to it. It's pretty useful for a couple later dungeons. I just never remember to use it. Okie doke. So now we can go ahead and leave the area. Come through here. Uh, I want to point something out here. I'm not sure if it's here yet, though. No, don't do that. I guess it's not here. Well, two things. One, there's a cave over there that we can't reach. So that should indicate to you that we're going to come back here at some point. So let's just swim around Jabu Jabu here. The other thing I wanted to point out, maybe I could see it by doing this. No. Okay, never mind. Later on, there's something at the bottom of the lake, but I wasn't sure if they show it to you now. I'll just come over here and check this. This should give me a surface to stand on. No. Okay. Never mind. It shows up later. Okay, doke. So, now that we have the boomerang, um, or I should say, now that we have Zora's Sapphire, we can proceed to speak with Princess Zelda. However, there are a couple things that I want to do first. The number one thing I want to do is go back to the Deku Tree and uh, get the final gold Skulltula of that dungeon. So she says, did my most precious possession help you in your quest? <laughs> and then we can also speak with uh, King Zora one more time. Oh, Link, so you saved the princess, eh? I really appreciate it. I know you do, sir. Okie doke. So let's go to inside the Deku Tree. And remember, there is a shortcut that we can take. So now that we have the silver scale, we can dive real deep in here. I'm deliberately going the wrong way here. Okay, great. So, back in Kokiri Forest, let's go visit the Great Deku Tree. So even though he has died, we can still go inside. That rhymed. And accessing this Skull Skulltilla, even though it's one of the final rooms of the dungeon, all of the shortcuts that we placed are still here. So we can just drop right down. Come over here. We're going to go through this crawl space. And then if you remember, there was a room in here behind a spider web that had a wall that we could not do anything about. But now that we have bombs, we can. However, if we were to have come here after um, after Dodongo's Cavern, we would have run up against yet another obstacle. And that obstacle would have been that the gold Skulltilla was out of reach. So let's kill this one. Or the giant one, rather. All right. And then we got to find it. Yep, see, it's on this wall. So we would have needed the boomerang anyway. And at 10 years old, I absolutely was furious. Oh, whoops, wrong button. 
I was absolutely furious that I came here only to have to come back again. <laughs> so that's why I waited to show it to you. All right. So if we go to the map again, the Gold Skulltilla icon is here. Now, another really important thing is that we now have 11 Gold Skulltillas. At 10, you can get the adult's wallet from the House of Skulltilla. So that's where we're going to go now. Oops. So unfortunately, we do have to... Oh no, we can go this way. This is actually quicker. Do we have to do two, three, one again? No, the door is open. So you can re-enter the boss door, or the boss room rather, and the teleporter is here. So this is actually the quickest way out of this dungeon. We would probably only be halfway climbing the wall by now, back into the entrance. Plus, it kicks us out here. Alrighty, so to get to Kakariko Village, the quickest way to do that is to go through the Lost Woods yet again. However, what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to call an audible here. We are going to warp back to the waterfall. Or the river, rather. Yes, I know it's Lost Woods. We're going to warp back to the river because I want to spend these 99 rupees with the bean salesman. So we can get out of here relatively quickly. But, so you could literally just like jump into the river and, and have it take you. That's one way to do it. But because I want to get to the bean salesman, I don't want to get taken too far off course. Although, you know, I guess it doesn't matter because there's a tiny little ledge for us to get up. So let's jump in the river. Oh my God, all these rupees are com a complete waste. Yeah, okay. Oh no, he's on the other side. Eh, it didn't matter. I should have gone the other way. Okay. okay, so every time you buy beans from this guy, the price goes up 10 rupees. So we're literally just going to dump all of our money into, into Mr. Bean here. How about some magic beans? They are getting to be quite popular, even though we're the only one buying them. Yeah, we can buy three here. It's helpful. Great. Okay. So, now that we have some more magic beans, let's go back to Kakariko Village. Oh, stout child. So something you'll notice is that even though it's not technically nighttime, the drawbridge is up and the sconces are lit. We'll talk about that more in a moment. For now, let's go back to Kakariko. We're going to go to the house of Skulltulla. What does this guy say again? I know he has, he has something to do with the quest. People are disgusting. My own father and mother are disgusting. You must be disgusting too. He has a quest going on. All right. So House of Skotola. Time to get our first reward. Now, if you remember, everyone in this house at the start was a Skotola. However, one of them will not be. Yep, there he is. The curse has been broken. Thank you. Here's a reward for you. 
you got an adult's wallet. Adults are allowed to carry a lot of money. Now you can hold up to 200 rupees. So when you get 50 gold skulltulas, you can get the, or maybe it's 30, you get the giant's wallet, which carries 500. But for now, we can carry 200, which is really helpful for the next several stages of the game. Okay, so now that we have completed this little segment, we are now going to go to the plot twist of the game. And then after that happens, we're going to end this part of the walkthrough. I'm going to warn you that if you have never played Ocarina of Time before and you know nothing about it, stop watching and just go to Hyrule Castle. You can figure the rest out on your own. But for those of you who, who are along for the ride, again, notice that it's like special dark here. And the time of day doesn't seem to be moving at all. The drawbridge is already up. The sconces are up. It will be this way during the day as well. It will just automatically become nighttime. When you move over here, a cutscene plays. It should look very familiar to you. Ark, I lost her. You, over there, little kid. You must have seen the white horse gallop past just now. Which way did it go? Answer me! So, you think you can protect them from me? You've got guts, kid. Oh. You want a piece of me? Very funny. I like your attitude. You got attitude. Ah! Pathetic little fool. Do you realize who you are dealing with? I am Ganondorf, and soon I will rule the world. I realize I made this guy partially British in the beginning. The whole time, Link is probably like, I dreamed about this dude. All right. All right. So Zelda threw something, and it lands in the moat. It's right here. Hello? What is going on? <laughs> okay, we got it. You found the Ocarina of Time. This is the royal family's hidden treasure which Zelda left behind. It glows with a mystical light. Link, can you hear me? It's me, Zelda. Link, when you hold this Ocarina in your hand... I won't be around anymore. I wanted to wait for you, but I couldn't delay any longer. At least I could leave you with the ocarina and this melody. This song opens the door of time. Music 
you learned the Song of Time. Way to go, kid. Now, Link, play this melody in front of the altar in the Temple of Time. You must protect the Triforce. All right. That is what we shall do. So we haven't gone into the Temple of Time in this walkthrough, but chances are if you walk around Hyrule Castle Town, you found it. Don't forget about the 20 spot. It's always helpful, especially after you spend a bunch of money. All right, so the Temple of Time is over here. It's the church. <laughs> oh, I have to tell you a really funny story. <laughs> I forgot about these four gossip stones. So, uh, at, oh my God, back in the 90s. Oh man, I can't believe I forgot about this. Back in the 90s, uh, after Ocarina of Time came out, before Majora's Mask, and even afterward, there was a rumor that the Triforce was obtainable in this game. Spoiler alert, it's not. But there were such wild rumors, and I was like part of a website that was just dedicated to trying to find it. Like at 10, 11, 12 years old, I was doing this. And one of the rumors that was that you needed to place a bomb in front of every gossip stone. Because if you place a bomb in front of a gossip stone, it takes off like a rocket. It's just a little Easter egg. And when you, when you leave and come back, it, it's back again. But these are the only four in the game that you cannot do it to because you can't use items on the screen. You're in a town. However, the rumor was like, there's if you blow up whatever, the other 40, 50 in the game, you'll be able to use a bomb here. And then once you blow those four up, the Triforce can be found in the Temple of Time or something stupid like that. But anyway, that is, I, that is such a funny rumor that I remembered. Okay, so let's enter the Temple of Time and do the thing. All right, so Zelda said to play the Song of Time in front of the altar using the Ocarina of Time. Notice that it has replaced the Fairy Ocarina, which is a bit of a bummer, but is what it is. Right A down, right A down. sound okay so the door of time has been opened and inside is a very important item link isn't that that legendary blade the master sword Excellent work. As I thought, you held the keys to the door of time. Can't find a consistent voice for him. You have led me to the gates of the sacred realm. Yes, I owe it all to you, kid. <laughs> Link, wake up. Link, the chosen one.
I am Raru, one of the ancient sages. Ages ago, we ancient sages built the Temple of Time to protect the entrance to the Sacred Realm. This is the Chamber of Sages, inside the Temple of Light. The Temple of Light, situated in the very center of the Sacred Realm, is the last stronghold against Ganondorf's evil forces. The Master Sword, the evil-destroying sword that you pulled out of the Pedestal of Time, was the final key to the Sacred Realm. Link, don't be alarmed. Look at yourself. He's all grown up. If you can tell me what movie that's from, I'll be impressed. Look, Link, you're big now. You've grown up. The Master Sword is a sacred blade which evil ones may never touch. Only one worthy of the title of Hero of Time can pull it from the pedestal of time. However, you are too young to be the Hero of Time. Therefore, your spirit was sealed here for seven years. And now that you are old enough, the time has come for you to awaken as the Hero of Time. Well, do you understand your destiny? Now, right here, this question, him asking if we understand, there is a Gossip Stone. I believe it's in the Sacred Forest Meadow, where if you have the, the Mask of Truth, which we'll get eventually, if you have the Mask of Truth and you read that, and you speak with that Gossip Stone, it will tell you that there is a rumor that the owl, Kapora Gabra, is actually Raru, or Rauru, however you say his name. And this kind of lends credence to that rumor. It's an in-game rumor, but it just, it's funny. So say yes, otherwise he'll repeat himself. But remember, though you opened the door of time in the name of peace, Ganondorf, the Gerudo King of Thieves, used it to enter this forbidden sacred realm. He obtained the Triforce from the Temple of Light, and with its power, he became the King of Evil. His evil power radiated from the temples of Hyrule, and in seven short years, it transformed Hyrule into a world of monsters. My power now has only little influence, even in the sacred realm, namely this chamber of sages. But there is still hope. The power of the sages remains. When the power of all the sages is awakened, the sages' seals will contain all the evil power in the void of the realm. I, Roruru, am one of the sages, and... Your power to fight together with the sages makes you the hero of time. The hero of time, chosen by the Master Sword. Keep my spirit with you, and find the power of the, of the other sages and add their might to your own. Receive the Light Medallion. Roar the Sage adds his power to yours. Find the other Sages and save Hyrule. And we're back. Link, we're back in the Temple of Time, but have seven years really passed? It looks like you won't be able to use some of the weapons you found as a kid anymore. Let's get out of here. I've been waiting for you, Hero of Time. When evil rules all, an awakening voice from the sacred realm will call those destined to be sages who dwell in the five temples. One in a deep forest, one on a high mountain, one under a vast lake, one within the house of the dead, one inside a goddesses, one inside a goddess of the sand. Together with the Hero of Time, the Awakened Ones will bind the evil and return the light of peace to the world. This is the legend of the temples passed down by my people, the Sheikah. I am Sheik, survivor of the Sheikahs. 
As I see you standing there holding the mythical Master Sword, you really do look like the legendary hero of time. If you believe the legend, you have no choice. You must look for the five temples and awaken the five sages. One sage is waiting for the time of awakening in the forest temple. The sage is a girl I'm sure you know. Because of the evil power in the temple, she cannot hear the awakening call from the sacred realm. Unfortunately, equipped as you currently are, you cannot even enter the temple. But if you believe what I'm saying, you should head to Kakariko Village. Do you understand? All right. So, uh, we're going to basically end the walkthrough here, but there's a couple things that I want to talk about. So, if we speak with Sheik again, they say, To save the forest grill, you need another skill. Head to Kakariko Village. You'll notice that they are blocking the pedestal of time, and that's for a very good reason. For now, you're kind of stuck as Adult Link. It's not a problem, but uh, you can't go back to being a child at least at this point. So the other thing that I want to say is that as adult Link, or really teenage Link, um, when you save and quit and start the game again, you will no longer start in Link's house. You will always start at the Temple of Time. So just keep that in mind. The other thing that I want to talk about is a couple things. First... You'll notice that Ruuru just gave you the light medallion, and he said, add my power to yours. Interesting thing. It was always rumored that the Temple of Light was meant to be a dungeon, but was cut for time. It was, like, incomplete, so they just cut it. Um, and so they just give you the medallion off rip. The other thing that I will say is that the line, add my power to yours, is very interesting. Because in early screenshots that were shown in Nintendo Power and in very early, early preview clips that were um, shown in promotional videos for this game, um, back in like 96, 97, the medallions appeared on the C buttons as usable items. So it's very possible that they just forgot to cut the line, add my power to yours, or now meant it in a more metaphorical stance, but the medallions are not usable items anymore. So it's a bit of an interesting line. And uh, yeah, just knowing that the medallions were once equipable, it kind of makes sense. But that's going to be it for now. Uh, we have hit the plot twist of the game. So this was the big moment. What is interesting is that um, when the game was being marketed, they showed both Child Link and Adult Link. So it was very clear that somehow you would become an adult or a teenager, but the method of which didn't make much sense. Like, it, it was just completely unknown. They didn't ever explain it. Um, that said, um, I kind of want to talk about this now while it's, like, freshly happening, but when that, when Sheik's theme started playing, that harp theme, I got a little emotional. And this game is not my favorite Zelda game. Uh, Majora's Mask is actually my favorite Zelda game. And this might be my third favorite Zelda game. It's still a masterpiece. Like, it is still so, 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 so good. But, um, like, it, it really knows how to, like, tug at you in certain ways. And I just have so many memories tied to this game uh, because of the hunt for the Triforce. Like, I became so familiar with the rumors and the development of this game that I know more than the average bear. Um, that said, I don't remember all the dungeons, like exactly all the enemy placements like I do in Link to the Past, but I just know so much about this game that I'm like very excited to share it throughout this walkthrough. And, uh, that sort of Light Temple thing and hearing that harp just made me remember a lot. So really happy to be doing this finally. But anyway, that's it for the walkthrough. In the next section, we will go get that new power, um, so we can get to the Forest Temple. We will not enter the Forest Temple because there's a couple of other things that I want to do now that we're Adult Link. So the next section of the walkthrough will just be a little bit of questing, and then the part after that will be the, the Forest Temple, or getting to the Forest Temple and then doing the Forest Temple. Okie doke. That's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. 
You can also leave a super thanks by clicking the heart icon below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.